Ethereum 5.8. Now, that's a fairly optimistic number. Until recently, uh, that number is, practically speaking, not achievable. The first quarter growth that was announced was something like 4.8%. Okay? The second quarter growth that was announced was 4.2%. Now, third quarter growth that has been announced is actually 5.3%. So it has actually improved. And not only did they announce improve 5.3%, they actually revised the growth figures for the first two quarters. So first quarter now became like 5.1% and the second quarter became something like 47 or 4.8%. Uh, and uh, with the final quarter coming up, I assume it'll be a number that looks good. But still to reach 5.8% means that you have to keep above 6% in growth. Because the first three quarters are, are less. And of course, this last quarter, the growth is actually compared quarter to quarter. The last quarter activities is usually higher than the rest, so it's a, it has a disproportionate weightage. But still, it's a, 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 a big jump that's required. So that's number one. Number two, I have no evidence, but I find the revision, the drastic revision of the quarterly numbers in the first two quarters highly suspicious. Ben Garo was asked, why do you make these adjustments? These were based on new information provided by the government. They didn't explain what information. Okay, they just said these are based on new information provided by the government. So at the end of the day, you may get some pretty numbers. Uh, because numbers, uh, like it or not, can be massaged. Okay, numbers, like it or not, can be massaged. Now, zero employment is slightly more technical. Zero employment technical in the sense that any unemployment between zero to three percent is typically referred to as zero unemployment. Because you will always have some people unemployed because they're in between jobs and, and stuff like that. So zero unemployment is a, a general term that you use to refer to unemployment less than 3% or something that's not significant. Now, that said, okay, employment is a tricky issue in a country with a large rural base. Okay? The Ibans in Sarawak, they work two days a week. Are they employed or are they not employed? Okay, under our calculations, they are employed. But they work two days, three days a week, or three hours, next day six hours, or they go on subsistence farming. You no, know, they just farm their land, earn enough, or hunt from the forest. Are they employed or not employed? So the calculation of employment, Najib in this case is technically correct. We have zero unemployment based on our statistics. But the question mark isn't so much about the zero unemployment. The question mark is on the way we calculate our employment. So there may be zero unemployment, but there may be what we call underemployment. That means we are not reaching the maximum uh, employment of all our uh, staff. I forgot your second question. Uh, referring to the bond, the launch bond, Amanda Saham. Ah, okay, Amanda Saham. Uh, okay, if it is, <coughs> you must be careful. They are a bit tricky in this type of things. Okay, they are bonds. They are, they are, they are unit trust. They are not bonds. They are unit trust that they launch. Okay, which are government backed and guaranteed. Okay? And then there are those that are unsecured. Okay? So if they are guaranteed, I would say take lah. Because mm -hmm. even if another government comes to power, they have to honor it. Okay? But if they are not guaranteed, then it's a bit tricky. Okay? Then you have to decide yourself whether this thing is this government is worth the risk or not worth the risk. Okay? Uh, so the the, what I have found so far, I don't know the latest scheme. Okay, the latest scheme from this I've not looked at the details. But previous schemes, the one that's open to all is not guaranteed. The one that's specifically for Bumi Trust, it was guaranteed. ASB is guaranteed. ASB is guaranteed. Okay, but the recent one, that I think the one Malaysia fund, I, I believe it's not guaranteed. Okay, it's not guaranteed. So you need to judge. Like I said, like, as all investment, read the prospectus, understand what you're investing before putting your money in. EPF money relating to that. Um, I don't think EPF is at any risk at this point in time. Assuming the financial accounts table is accurate, and I, I, I wouldn't think it is far off, uh, although anything can happen. Uh, Sorry, Mr. Kuang, I just cannot hear you. Sorry for using the word. That's okay. Uh, uh, I don't think EPF is at major risk at this point in time. So, take it out. It, it actually provides, in terms of actual dividends, higher than your bank fixed deposits. 
Okay, it does. It's just not flexible in terms of taking it out and stuff like that. But it does give a higher percentage at this point in time. Okay? But the risk in EPF is increasing. I don't have the numbers with me. But the proportion, you, you see, in, in Singapore, they pay a lot less in dividends. They pay about 2% to 2.5%. Tiny. Okay? Sometimes less. But they have a they have a structure whereby only 10% of their funds can be invested in risky assets equity stock market or say loans okay the rest of it are essentially government backed notes which is your government loan loans to government and, and, and stuff like that okay so it's risk free but of course the, you, you, you give government loans your interest rate is very low the returns that they get is very low now in Malaysia the opposite has been happening okay the, 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 the equity portfolio has been increasing by leaps and bounds this is another issue to talk about EPM is buying dip and bounce. Now 33% of the portfolio is in equities. And then another 10 plus percent is in loans. 10, 20%, I can't remember the exact breakdown in loans. And then after that, there's a big chunk in government security still. And the government is expanding it further by allowing them to invest up to 10% in overseas assets. So they are buying assets in London and, and, and several other places today. So the risk profile of EPF, frankly speaking, is increasing. Now, if you look at the stock market, it's been doing very well. But if you look at all the big companies, okay, EPF hold very substantial stakes in all of them. In all of them. Literally all of them. Okay? Uh, and that becomes a risk for EPF. If the whole market in Malaysia collapses, then there's a risk to EPF. So all these, but usually they invest in investable companies. Uh, they don't invest in your 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 five cent companies. The investable companies in Malaysia, like your blue Malaysian blue chips. But still, there is a risk. Your Sun Derby is a blue chip, but you saw what happened the last time when they screwed up billions in uh, Saudi Arabia. Okay, UMBC used to be a, 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 a Sun Bank used to be an investable asset, then it became uh, rescued uh, by asset. So. There is always a risk in the stock market. And based on the profile of the investments in EPF, the risk profile has definitely increased. So as a retiree, and this is your only source of income, then your returns may not be your priority. You know, if you are young, going, can afford to lose everything and start again, then you will be going for outsized returns. You know, whatever can give me 10% returns per annum, let me try. But I can afford the risk because I can still start over again and work and earn back my money. Whereas if you are a retiree with no other source of income, no ability to generate future income, then whatever you have, you protect it at all costs, even if it comes with lower returns. This is the typical, uh, uh, my alternative job, so <laughs> uh, uh, advice to investors. Uh, I, I, I do that myself because I, I, I started, I, I worked for... I worked for Anderson Consulting when I came back, worked for about one and a half years to ten months, and I asked my boss, uh, boss, do uh, you think I can become a partner in five years? I said, no, no, no. Even if you're very good, the faster you can become a partner is ten years. That's too slow for me. So I quit and set up my own business because I said I want to retire by 30. So, <laughs> so the only the, the reason why is because I can still afford to lose it. I can lose everything. I can start over again. Worst case is I have some debt. I work for someone. I just pay off the debt slowly. You know? But if you are a retiree, it's a completely different story. So uh, that one you have to figure out yourself. I can't, I can't advise you. Um, what else? Huh? Retirement age. There's a pros and cons to that. Um, and you have answered your own questions really. Uh, it does increase the income of the country. It does increase productivity uh, in some ways uh, by making sure you remain employed and generate value in the economy. And as a result, contribute taxes to the country and usually if you are at that level you will be contributing a significant amount okay uh, and because our life expectancy has increased we are very healthy at point of 55 uh, most people don't want to retire there okay uh, but the flip side of it the flip side of it is you also have a problem relating to my earlier problem civil service they stay around longer okay uh, time you have to switch them becomes a bit difficult. Okay. Uh, so so these are the the, the 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 points that I think you, you have highlighted quite clearly uh, yourself. Top 
three cards. Um, I don't know about top three cards, but I think what I do instead is go on principles, the principle policy changes that you do. Uh, I think the number one principle has to be all procurement has to be tendered competitively, competitively, openly, and transparently. I think that's the number one thing. And only when you do that, you will get your best value for money. There's no question about it. Okay? Singapore is, 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 is ridiculous about the whole thing. A Malaysian can go into a Singapore gbs.gov.my and see all the contracts that are offered by the government. Okay? Uh, if you're not qualified, you cannot take part, but you can see all of it. Okay? The results, when it's out, okay? No. After, after the, 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 the bidders came in, all the bids are published, even before the announcement. So A, B, C, D, E contractors submit, all their prices are published. Okay? Uh, if there's breakdown, they'll give the breakdown. Uh, they don't give the detailed stuff, but they give the breakdown. All published. And then they get awarded. They get published again, and all the details of the contract award is open. The whole contract agreement is open. You get the contract agreement before you even bid. Because it's part of the document. They tell you, this is a contract you will have to sign if you take part in this contract. If you award it, you just sign this agreement. Ours is a bit reversed. IPP. We all know the problem is IPP. Okay? So they said, last time, contract signed cannot change. That's what they always say. That's why they cannot revise the prices of the IPPs. Okay? So I ask, future contracts out. Future contracts out. At least, if future contracts competitive, then we are at least progressing. Recently, they awarded the Southeast Asia's largest okay, coal-powered uh, power plant okay, in Tanjong Bin, to Malakov, also Tan Sri Sat Mokas Okay, They awarded. So I asked Peter Chin in Parliament, written letter, uh, written question, um, was there an open tender for this power? Answer came back, no. I asked why? I said, because there's not enough time. <laughs> Why not enough time? Why must the power plant be ready? 2016. Five years, and you cannot afford two months or maybe three months delay to carry out an open tender. That's it. Okay? And they say that we are already subsidizing our electricity a lot. And I'd say the reason why we have to subsidy, uh, subsidize our electricity so much is because you let the contract uh, the, 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 the IPPs earn too much. So as a result, you have to subsidize more to make the price more reasonable.